What's your story? Whether you're a client or an independent financial advisor, we know you face many important decisions that can affect your and your client's long-term financial success. Welcome to the WIN Podcast. What's important now with Corey Hymanson, accredited investment fiduciary and president of Hymanson Wealth Advisors. In this podcast, Corey helps you identify your goals and objectives through financial education and comprehensive planning while inspiring you to make better behavioral decisions in your personal finance. With a twist on pop culture and current events, join us as we explore growth and protection strategies for individuals, advisors, and their businesses. Come and discover what's important to you now. Hello, and welcome to the Win Podcast with Corey Hymanson. Corey, what's going on? Hey, another day, new day. New day. Yeah. Hey, I just want to say thank you again for that last podcast. Listeners, if you haven't heard it, you got to go back and listen to it. You brought in a couple of guests, folks that are working with you in the office, and the audience got to got to know them a bit. So that was that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. It was it was definitely fun, but the thing I really didn't like. Now this is just me with an ego. I've done a lot of shows, and those two guys came in and knocked it out of the park. And here I'm like pretty average. I thought for a few episodes before I was on top of it. So yeah, no, I just you're, maybe it's a younger generation thing. No, you're looking at it the wrong way. You have mentored them so well in podcasts. Ah. Giving them such a good example, that's what made them successful. That's how I <laughs> fair enough. Anyway. I'll take it. Yeah, we'll take it. Moving on. Um today I'm I'm curious out of, out of curiosity. I know the audience can't see you, but you've got a jersey on, and I'm I'm curious why. This is not your normal dress uh, for for a work day. What's going on? You don't think that I wear a, a Dallas Cowboys football jersey to work every day? maybe you do. I just haven't seen it before. So maybe no. I just caught you on an off day. <laughs> no, I, I, I definitely do not. I, you know, I, I'm what they call maybe a middle-aged guy. And I don't even know if I'm supposed to own an NFL Jersey or if that's just a little <laughs> out of my cool zone or whatever, whatever you say. But anyway, wanted to have a little fun today. Wanted to surprise you. So yes, I'm wearing a Dak Prescott Dallas Cowboys football Jersey. Now, is that your team? Yes, I am a Dallas Cowboy fan, and, and it's funny. Uh, my family bought me this jersey, and it's in the dark blue of the Dallas Cowboys. And, mm-hmm. and as I grew up, my dad was a Dallas Cowboy fan too, and he always hated when they wore dark blue because he thought that was just a bad outcome color for them, that they should always wear white. And so here I am. I, I believe that superstition, and yet I, I own a blue jersey. Well, I won't tell him if you won't. So, <laughs> well, it, well, you're you're in good company. Uh, my my beloved, my wife is a huge Cowboys fan. I personally am a Seahawks fan. So the the house gets a little contentious, uh, you know, during certain seasons, like the last few where we've whooped on the Cowboys every time. Oh. But whatever, we we can move on. Uh, what do you want to talk about today? <laughs> oh man, I, I didn't even know you were a Seahawks fan. So this is really going to get Ugly. difficult, heated, heated <laughs> okay. if not okay. something else. But. <laughs> <laughs> the maybe we should go to the, the the title of the podcast. Maybe that'll that'll help right. build what we're what we're working on here. What is it? It is FOMO versus Romo. Now I have to slow that down a little. So fear of missing out. That's right. Is is what the what the youngsters, I guess I'll say, people like me don't know how to how to text and, and use acronyms. But uh, it's an acronym for texting, I guess. Fear of missing out versus I say Romo, so that would be Tony Romo, Cowboys quarterback. But right. in all actuality, what I'm talking about today is regret of missing out. Hmm. Okay. But, so, but before, since yeah. you brought up the Seahawks, I almost have to bring back this horrible memory of mine. And, and that would be when Tony Romo was the holder for a place kick field goal that would have hmm. sent the Cowboys to the Super Bowl versus the Seahawks, and Romo dropped the ball. <laughs> I remember that day because <laughs> my entire in-law family, I think they stopped talking to me for a while. My kids were pretty small at that time, and I'm pretty sure I taught them some some language <laughs> that night. Ooh, dad's got new words. <laughs> yeah, dad's cool. So that was, that, it still burns me to think about it, but I'm the one that titled the podcast, so it's my own fault, right? Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about why FOMO? Why, why now? <laughs> it... It's the, you know, the year to date, as we record this, markets have been down. Um, people get nervous. They get edgy. And, and so this, this title came to me because it, it, it's important to remember that 
we shouldn't focus on the fear of missing out on things. It, it's really the regret of what we miss out on if we, if we make bad decisions, essentially. Mm-hmm. And, and so I wanted to, to dig a little deeper into that, that this fear of missing out, it, it's probably snowballed or mushroomed from social media. You know, essentially, you see all these cool things and everybody's on vacation all the time and they just have perfect, glamorous lives. And, and maybe that translates or sidelines into investing too, that, my gosh, everybody made money in, in this cryptocurrency or in that piece of real estate or on and on and on. And so people, a lot of people, I think are always chasing the dream. You know, mm. maybe that's lotto, you know, or lottery, you know, I don't know. But what's really important is when I talk about regrets of missing out, it's, it's like, what if you derail your, your financial plan that's, that's well-constructed and you you don't listen to your advisor and you just get out of the market and you think you'll get back in some other day, but you never do, or you do at a much higher level. And that's what we're talking about. The regret you feel when you know you've made a ma- a bad, bad mistake. Yeah. Well, let me ask you that. I mean, I mean, I'm 48, right? We've talked a little bit about that before. So I guess I'm middle-aged as well. Um, and I'm, I'm challenging the audience here. We're going to give some contact information at the end of the podcast, but in my opinion, Corey, I, I think that the, I think social media and the media in general, but really social media has really blown up the the FOMO issue. And it's all about, or it's all because, and again, my opinion, that hindsight is twenty twenty, and it's so easy to be able to look back on something and say, see, I you should have done this when you, you didn't even say they should have done it in the first place, right? It's, it's the media telling you, you don't want to miss out on this next thing because look what happened back then. And I feel like, that's way more prevalent today than it was maybe 20, 30 years ago. And any audience member that wants to correct me on that, please, by all means, email in and maybe give some examples to Corey so we can we can talk about that in a future podcast. But I just think it's 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 worse today than it was 20 to 30 years ago with that messaging. I would totally agree. And, and I'm even going to give you, we can, we can skip social media for a second. Recently, and I've had lots of, clients and prospects calling in here asking about i bonds and this was something you and i brought up yes you know a few episodes ago and and so i went back and i started replaying some of the news clips that are in the in the public news so i could see what what clients and prospects are seeing and you get a little snippet that says oh you can make tons of money in i bonds from the government for the next 6 months well that is true <laughs> that is an absolute true statement what they don't explain uh-huh. is that this is a 30-year bond. So you might really kick tail for six months or 12 months, but what if you own this bond 28 years from now and there hasn't been inflation for 14 years? So that kind of ties into the fear of missing out thing. I get people calling here saying they need I-bonds and they really only know 4% of the, of the product of what it mm-hmm. really is and all the details, you know, because they feel like they're missing out because some news program in the morning for two hours talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and not to give out too much information, but uh, I know that I bonds, you know, currently quote unquote, and we're recording this in, in late May, early June, you know, I think for the next six months or whatever is over 9%. But again, like you said, they don't tell you all the rules. The percentages change. There's, there's issues. If you try to cash it out early, you lose. I mean, there's so many different rules that they just don't tell you. And that's where, you know, somebody who is in the know and does the research is so valuable. Yeah. And I'll throw even one more little tidbit on that one. The, the media doesn't tell you that there's a cap on how many of these you can buy as a consumer from mm-hmm. the United States treasury. There so if, if the cap you can buy is $10,000 in a year for the vast majority of the people listening to this, having a $10,000 investment in your desk drawer for the next 30 years probably doesn't move the needle on the success rate of your project. Mm-hmm. So it might be a really, really good thing. And, you know, maybe I'm downplaying it like it's not a great 30 year thing, which I don't think it is, but anyway, maybe it fits into the puzzle, (laughs) but what really creates success. And we've said this before too. It's not one little detail. That's a, that's a home run. It's a collection of smart activities and smart steps over many, many years and time is on our side, you know? So uh, again, sometimes people focus on the pennies when they should be thinking about the dollars. Yeah. Well, are you a TikTok user, Corey? I am not. Okay. Well, 
I don't post a TikTok because, well, like I said, I'm 48. <laughs> I'm too old for that. But uh, we, I like to get on TikTok. My wife does. My daughter does. We, we'll look through this. And I'll tell you one thing that's been happening more and more is you see advertisements come up, which is normal, right, for any social media. But something that I've been seeing a lot is final days to invest in such and such. I don't even know how they can do that with regulations the way they are, but that's what's on there. Final days to invest in this. It's, you know, it's a, it's a IPO or it's some sort of launch. They want people in on the ground floor. Same thing happened with crypto on there. Like, Hey, this is the next big cryptocurrency. And what we're seeing was that a lot of people were doing pump and dumps, meaning they're pumping these things up. People put their money in and then sure. everybody who started it dumps out real quick. They made a bunch of money and everybody else who saw it on TikTok or saw it on some sort of social media and jumped in because, wow, this is going to be the next big thing. They lost it. Yep. And you hit so many good points there for the, for the listeners out there. If you're wondering why we have to record this months and months before you'll ever hear it, it's because of regulations and it's our industry. And, you know, people like us are super accountable for mm -hmm. what we say. We, you know, we have to be really, really careful here. And, and you're right. Anybody can get on TikTok make a cool dance or yep. make some crazy declaration. Apparently nobody pleases that for the record. I should mention, I have made a couple of guest appearances in my daughter's TikTok dances because they think it's, it's cool to have an old guy yes. try to do something that they're not supposed to physically be able to do a dance move to, or I don't know, whatever. But, <laughs> so I don't know if people can search and find me now that I've let the cat out of the bag there, but whatever. Yep. Yeah, I would say that you know, anybody that comes in and has an appointment with you gets access to that TikTok. I think that should be like a bonus thing. And just not <laughs> listening to the podcast, you've got to sit down and have an appointment with Corey to get that link. Boy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we might have to set some set some guidelines to <laughs> narrow that list down. I don't know. Yeah, oh, we're off the rails again, Eric. We're off we the rails. Are. We are. We are. All right. So let's let's go back to FOMO. I mean, this is the fear of missing out is very, very strong. Right. Um, and the, the, I don't know, I don't know what the opposite of FOMO is or, you know, fear of getting caught, uh, losing money. And what, what, what is that acronym? How, how do we, how do we battle that? I mean, how, how do we, as a, not only just as a population, but how do you help your clients move past that or be able to see past the FOMO that they feel? Cause it's all emotional. We all have them, you know, that's just how it works. It totally, totally. And this is interesting. A, a large mutual fund family that, that's been around a long, long time and really only believed in passive investing strategies. Some people might be able to connect the dots and point to who I'm talking about there. But anyway, um, they just came out with a study. And, and I just read this last week. And, and basically what it says is human advisors do a better job than robotic or computer advisors. You know, <laughs> it's like, hopefully they didn't spend a lot of time and money on this because I could Seriously, have told them right? that because you hit it. It is emotion. And I'm not saying I'm the greatest thing ever, but if I or people like me can just sit down and have a conversation or a phone call or a, uh, an online virtual meeting with a client or someone that's scared or emotional or worried about missing out on this or that, or just scared about markets, we can be the voice of reason. And that's what people need. They don't need a computerized formula telling them what their asset allocation should be. They need a human that can, can feel what's emotional or what the emotional buttons are for that person in front of them and help them make good decisions. I'm not saying everybody's got to be invested 100% all year long, year after year after year. You got to be invested and have a plan for what helps you get to what you enjoy in life. And, and you're right. It is so much about behavioral and emotion uh, that, that maybe I didn't even realize it through the years as I built this career, but maybe I have some uh, psychology or I, I don't know what the right term would be that makes me really good at this, but it, it's connecting with humans and making things that are complicated or scary, not seem so complicated or so scary. I think that one of the issues is, or one of the reasons is, is because you, you take the time and you, you're not a salesperson period. And, and I, I say that because, um, this just recently happened in, in my life. My wife, we got her a car, um, good tires on it. You know, they had good tread. 
one of the tires was leaking a little bit of air. Not sure why she went and had it checked. I said, you know, let's, let's talk about it. Let's figure this out. She went and got it checked. And because the side of the tire had a little bit of rub on it, the, the tech, which I will also say the salesperson said, Oh, we really can't do anything about that because that they could, you know, that could be some damage on the sidewall. So he sold her four new tires for $800. And I'm still, <laughs> and, and my son's a mechanic and he's like, mom, what are you doing? It was her fear, right? She, she, I, and I don't blame her. I want her yep. to be on safe tires. But in that moment, instead of getting a second opinion or not just taking that guy's word for it, she pulled the trigger on it. Now I'm dealing with, you know, the, the folks at that location. I won't say the store name, but, um, that was pretty underhanded, you know, and, and that's not what you do. That's not what a good advisor does. You take the time to talk about it, weigh some options and, and tell the truth. Yep. In, in that story of yours reminds me, I heard this from somebody a long time ago. Heck, maybe it was from you. Maybe you told me, you know, not every, uh, let's say car dealership in the city of Chicago can have the best service in town, mm -hmm. but every one of them might advertise that they do. <laughs> so it's easy to, to talk the talk, but man, you got to do the right thing and deliver later. And, you know, and I tell people or clients this too, it's when markets get a little bumpy, it is not my job to assist them in avoiding near-term bumps in the market or intermediate-term bumps. You know, my job is to keep them, you know, on that on that ocean liner, let's say, and not just be jumping in the in the escape boats all the time. Because I I don't want them to suffer that regret of missing out or messing up their plan because they they just made an emotional decision. Yeah. I love how you weaved that Romo acronym right back in. It's not my first day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. And, and the way I can weave that in though, Eric, is because I'm being real. You yeah. know, we're just having a conversation here and we don't, we don't script all this. This is pretty much, I hate to say winging it, but we're kind of winging it because we want to be real mm -hmm. with, with the listeners out there and, and, Ultimately, that's who you want to team up and work with in life. I'm not saying it's got to be us. I'm just saying, whether it's your mechanic or that that person putting tires on your car or whatever, your attorney, your lawyer, your doctor, and we always go back to those same professions. I mean, got to got to be where you feel comfortable, and and maybe that's even where you live on your on your street or in town or what city or state, you know? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So funny because you, you triggered a memory with that story that you told about Chicago. Uh, you remember the movie Elf? Yes. Yeah. I mean, he's in New York for the first time and he runs into that coffee shop. You know, it says world's best copy. And he's like, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> he's so excited for him because he, he has no clue, right? <laughs> he has no clue that every coffee shop has the world's best coffee. Yeah. So no, I, it, it's so funny that you brought that memory back up to me because that's, that's the sales process. That's marketing, right? They're going to market how they're going to market. And that goes right back to investments that, I mean, how many of these companies are pushing, pushing, pushing for people to um, not miss out on the next best thing or here, let me instill some fear into you. So you change your mind about the, the, your strategy. Um, and I like the fact that you're there, even keel steady rock to say, look, we have a plan in place. Let's look at how the plan will be affected by missing out on this opportunity. Let's look at how this plan will be affected by taking advantage of an opportunity that's sketchy. Exactly. Now I'm having a flashback. I, I had <laughs> a, a group of people came to me this. Now we're going back probably 15 years. And, and it's funny. It was a group of people that had created a group to invest in an ethanol plant. Mm. And, and, and that was not through my office. That was just, you know, a direct investment they made as a group collectively. And, and they hit a home run. They made a pile of money because they sold the plant to somebody bigger. They had a small interest, but they, they sold it. Mm -hmm. And so it was so interesting to me. So you, you take a collection of, we'll call it 10. It wasn't 10, but we're going to call it 10 people. And individually, I would talk to these people. And one of them would say, man, we hit a home run. Now I've got to find the next home run. Oh boy. Yeah. But one of those gentlemen came to me and he says, we got lucky and hit the home run. And I'm going to acknowledge that. And I'm going to say that it was probably more luck than skill on our part. I do not want to screw this up. I do not need another home run. Mm -hmm. I just need smart decisions from here. So it's just funny how when you, when you work with people in life, 
there can be so many different emotions or thought processes from person to person to person. And that's why uh, one size does not fit all Mm -hmm. when it comes to this stuff. And that even ties back into that uh, mutual fund company uh, study I talked about earlier, you know, Uh, uh, it's just so cool. And that's maybe why I like getting out of bed every day because it's just fun to have these conversations and, and see different types of people that do different things and think differently. No, that makes perfect sense. And, and I know that you've, we're, we're getting close to the end of the podcast here. Is there anything else that we need to think about when it comes to FOMO and ROMO on our daily, in our daily life? You know, the, the fear of missing out isn't just emotional. You know, I, I think it can truly affect you from a health standpoint too, mm-hmm. beyond emotions. I, I, th- I think it can, can wear you down. It can stress you out, fatigue, burnout, maybe leading to even bigger and, and more problems is that what I see frequently, and I said that earlier, sometimes people focus on the pennies instead of dollars. The other thing is that sometimes people focus on the dollars. Maybe the dollars aren't as important as health or mm-hmm. family or you know things like that. So when you think of your perfect retirement, it may not be climbing Mount Everest or skydiving or you know, doing these wonderful things that are in magazine pictures, it might be volunteering. It might just be sitting and feeding birds in your backyard. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so health is such a huge part of that success story too, that, you know, do I exercise enough? No, but I should, you know, but if you don't exercise much, get out and, you know, start, go read a book, you know, try and do productive things that can maybe give you longevity in life. And if we do the other stuff right, we'll have the financial wherewithal for longevity as well. Yeah, no, that's that's a perfect place to end this. Um, I think that everybody's searching for that, right? I mean, I, I don't know, personally, I don't know anyone that A, has it all figured out and B, has zero stress in their life. But there are some easy steps to reduce a lot of that stress, just like you're talking about. So. I wanted to give people an opportunity to reach out to you. I I prompted people at the beginning, um, email, phone number, what what contact information that should they use to get a hold of you? Let's go with an email this time because there might be people out there that have a personal touch or a feel to all this, and and maybe they want an email instead of sharing that verbally with us. So let's go podcast at the win dot today. Perfect. Corey, thank you so much for your time today. Absolutely. It was great. Go Seahawks. No, killing me. <laughs> it's your podcast. You can end it. Ready? Go for it. How about them cowboys? There you go. <laughs> All right. Again, Corey, thank you so much. And our last thank you, of course, goes to you listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Win Podcast with Corey Hymanson. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Corey comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it really easy to share these podcasts with your friends and family, no matter what team they root for. Please share it with them. They'll, they'll get a lot out of it. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at Hymanson Wealth Advisors, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to The Win Podcast. What's important now? The show that helps you achieve your financial dreams. To ask questions about topics covered during the show or get a copy of Stop Doing Dumb Things With Your Money by Corey Hymanson, visit www.hymansonwealth.com or give us a call at 712-472-3867. Don't forget to click the follow button below to be notified when new episodes become available. Securities offered through Securities America, Inc., member FINRA SIPC. Advisory services offered through Securities America Advisors, Inc. Hymanson Wealth Advisors and Securities America are separate entities. Material discussed is meant for general informational purposes only, and it is not to be construed as tax, legal, or investment advice. Although the information has been gathered from sources believed to be reliable, please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. Diversification does not insure against loss.